Good morning, colleagues. Thank you for coming to listen to me this morning. I want to extend a special welcome to one out of three registrants to this meeting that come from outside of the United States. Welcome to the American Academy of Pediatrics. <clears throat> the Academy started as a challenge to the status quo. With a sincere interest in scientific inquiry and altruistic hearts, in 1929, the first meeting of 35 pediatricians took place at the home of Dr. James Rosenville for dinner. The great names of early pediatrics were present, and it was then that the AAP seed was planted, and now, 86 years later, I look out on this audience, wonder how much dedication you're gonna have to the scientific offerings, what initiatives will we favor to challenge the status quo? And uh, specifically, how are we going to execute our skills of scientific inquiry and altruism as the days go by? Fellowship of the AAP was one of the most important milestones in my career. The American Board of Pediatrics may certify us as pediatricians or pediatrics of specialists but it is the AAP that enables us to be one every day. Our world has changed. Pediatrics has changed. The needs of children have changed. Our needs as pediatricians have changed. And if we are to be relevant to our mission, we too as individuals and as fellows of the Academy must change. How can we be as strong for families and children when pediatricians are under so much duress, the healer is not healed. As pediatricians, we're being asked to do more and more while being supported by health systems less and less every day. We chose our profession because of our natural altruistic inclinations, and currently by self-report, more than 50% of us are burned out empathy exhausted, and compassion fatigue. As the challenges to the profession every day grow, there is worry and there is pain in the faces we don't see. I believe that now is the time for the Academy to take a loud and clear and unmistaked position in the defense of the pediatrician. It is no longer sufficient to prioritize children when the pediatrician is hurting. During my visits to all the districts during this summer, two themes rose to the top of the agenda for our members. First, an almost uniform objection to the current status quo on the maintenance of certification. <laughs> the current system is felt to be more of an intermittent threat than a lifelong commitment to learning. We need to remove this as a toxic stress for the pediatrician <laughs> and help develop it as an asset to scientific knowledge, making maintenance of certification something that should be part of the normal, normal workflow in the life of the practitioners. As president, I will ensure that the Academy continues to work to amend the necessary requirements for certification and maintenance of certification, as well as addressing the cost for both. <clears throat> the second consistent theme is a call to action for the Academy to build a technology platform so that members can harness data from their practices and the Academy that includes demographics, economic data, and distribution of health indicators to promote their business models. As shareholder members, we must have transparent access to this data. I was chairman of the Council on Sections and of the Committee on Membership. I have a deep understanding and appreciation for the true shareholders of this organization. My message to you as shareholder members and colleagues 
is one of a clear commitment to you, to our traditions of scientific inquiry, altruism, and challenge to the status quo. Today, in children 5 to 21 years of age, injuries from all causes, suicide and homicide, are the first, third, and fourth leading cause of death. This is above respiratory diseases, infections, and sepsis, my friends. The gun violence issue is under any definition an epidemic and a public health problem. If we had, let's call it an agent, be it a virus or some other form of life that is killing close to 100 people a day or injuring hundreds of people every day, would we not call it a public health problem? Would we not undertake scientific study? The oversimplification of violence as a problem of social justice is unjustified. Violence is a global health problem. The World Health Organization proposes, proposes broad, broadening the definition of the problem beyond the legal, strategic, or tactical considerations to demonstrate the public health importance. We must embrace the public health community's position of emphasis on scientific methodologies and prevention. Let us bring into the arena of discussion the large body of scientific work which has been carried out over the past few decades by a variety of public health institutions nationally and internationally but with the legal prohibition to gather data to even ask about firearms, to even, <clears throat> we have been taken back to the Middle Ages, to the Inquisition. It was heresy to dissect bodies or discover planets or show that the earth was indeed round. As president of the AAP, I pled pledge to challenge the legislative efforts aimed at prohibiting pediatricians and scientific organizations from gathering potentially life-saving information about firearms, just as we did in the past regarding the debate on vaccines. Is it no time to approach this with the same vigor of scientific inquiry we undertook for the prevention of communicable diseases? I say yes, and I know you say yes. Thank you.